Welcome to U.S. Immigration TV. Now, I know almost all immigrants dream of the day they can finally naturalize and proudly declare they are a U.S. citizen. However, there are certain situations where naturalization can mess up your family's case. So make sure to watch this video until the end and of course, like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. And if you have any questions or issues about your case, you should consult with an attorney for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Now, I recently had a consultation with an immigrant, a green card holder, who filed a petition for his spouse and his two minor children in what's called the F2A category. That's spouse or minor children of an immigrant. Now, after the pride date became current and they were already documentarily qualified, meaning completo, the petitioner went ahead and naturalized while the family was waiting for their visa interview. Okay, so now comes the date of the interview. And his wife, though, at the interview, she was issued the visa, but his kids were denied. So the consul explained what happened. The consul said that because the petitioner naturalized, only his spouse was eligible for a visa, and he must now file new petitions for his children. Well, as most immigrants would think, he also thought that naturalizing would be better for the case. But now, because of his naturalization, his family is really in a worse position because the mother or his wife has the visa, but the kids do not. Now, is there any way his children can still be included in the petition? Now, is it true that naturalizing made the case worse? Well, the answer is... A little bit complicated, but whenever a U.S. citizen petitions their spouse, parents, or minor children, called immediate relatives, there can only be one person per petition. No derivatives are allowed. Therefore, if a person wants to petition their parents, they must file two petitions, one for the mother, another for the father. They cannot file a single petition for both their mother and father. If a U.S. citizen has a spouse and, let's say, two children, the U.S. citizen would have to file three petitions, one for the spouse and two additional petitions for each of his two children. Now, all other family and employment-based categories do allow derivative family members, such as spouses and their minor children. Therefore, when a person petitions their family, their spouse and children, while they are an immigrant, a single petition can cover all of them, both the spouse and the minor children. However, when the petitioner naturalizes, the law allows only one person per petition. So in his case, only the wife is covered by the original petition. And the children, who had been derivatives and were covered under the original F2A petition, fall off that petition because the petition converts from F2A, which is spouse and minor children of immigrant, to immediate relative covering only the spouse. In fact, the Foreign Affair Manual, or the FAM, which is an embassy regulation, addresses this exact situation and recommends that if a petitioner plans on naturalizing, they should file separate petitions for each of their family members. The FAM states, and I quote, if the petitioner intends to become a U.S. citizen before their spouse and children have immigrated to the U.S., the petitioner should file separate immigrant visa or IV petitions for any children who are currently deriving their immigration status through the spouse. That way, when the petitioner is naturalized, the petition according second preference status, F21, to the spouse, as well as those petitions according second preference status, F22, uh, to any children, that's still F2A, will be converted automatically to accord the beneficiaries immediate relative which is spouse or children. If, however, 
the petitioner does not file separate petitions for their children before naturalization, the children, and this is the important part, the children will lose their derivative status upon the petitioner's naturalization since the spouse's status will automatically convert to immediate relative or IR1 and there is no derivative status for immediate relatives. The petitioner will then have to file new petitions on their behalf to accord them IR2 status. So unfortunately, I just want to be honest with you, if a petitioner originally files an F2A petition for the spouse and children and then naturalizes, the children can no longer be issued visas under the original F2A petition and the petitioner would now have to file two new separate immediate relative petitions for his children. Naturalizing could also create problems for derivative children under petition in the F2A category who may have qualified for age out benefits under the Child Status Protection Act or SESPA. If they are already over 21 years of age and a new petition must now be filed for them because the petitioner naturalized, there could be questions about their age out eligibility. In fact, if a kid is eligible under the Child Status Protection Act in F2A and a parent naturalizes after their biological 21st birthday, they may lose SESPA benefits. Now I know it's in everyone's dream to eventually become a U.S. citizen after perhaps struggling years to legalize their own status and finally getting their green card. And so they think naturally that naturalizing is simple and straightforward and they can do it themselves. But as you can see, there are hidden traps and landmines that may affect your case. That's why if you are considering naturalizing but are pursuing other immigration benefits, even for a family member, you should consult with an attorney first because once you naturalize, the damage may already be done. I hope you have found this video informative and, and helpful for you or somebody you know. So therefore, make sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel. I'm Michael Gerfingel, and thank you for watching and subscribing to U.S. Immigration TV.